Happy Easter Saturday, everyone. I've been invited to share the Easter message with you by Pastor Luke, and I'd like to do that. I'd like to start off with a particular personal story. When I was a kid, my dad had a serious illness and his condition deteriorated. I was young, but nevertheless, we did speak about dying especially on more emotional days. We had no hope, my dad and I, against an incurable brain disease. And some of our conversations were sensitive and we even talked about the afterlife. In fact, naively, as a young lad, I once asked my father a simple request. I said, Dad, when you die... Will you come back and see me? And my dad responded saying, yes, if it's possible. He died in December 1977 and he's never returned. So does that mean a resurrection from the grave is impossible? Not necessarily, because what is impossible for one person may be possible for someone else. Now, it's estimated that 100 billion people have lived on earth and all of those people have died and they have never returned. And, you know, right now we're in the midst of uh, the coronavirus. There's a pandemic um, affecting the world. And I'd just like to pray um, for families that have lost lo loved ones right now before I continue my message. And I would just like to pray for the protection also of anybody that's listening to this Easter message right now, Lord Jesus. We just pray that you will comfort the families that have lost loved ones in this difficult time. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will protect the families um, who have not yet been infected and keep those families safe. Lord, we pray for all the health workers. Lord, we are sorry that we have lost so many frontline workers to this disease already. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will protect the people working for the NHS and all the frontline staff, whatever their vocation and the social um, communities and the charities that I'm helping right now in the name of Jesus. I pray your protection right now. Lord, in Jesus name. Now, we have to talk about death sometimes. The world's in a very desperate situation and a hundred million people at one time lived on earth and all those people have died and they never returned. That's except one person and that is Jesus Christ. There's, you know, there's always one, isn't that? There's always one exception to the rule. Everyone on earth kind of goes down and they stay down, but not so with Jesus Christ. Now, I wasn't there 2,000 years ago when Jesus risen from his tomb. I didn't see anything of that. But many people who saw it told what happened. Whether we believe their testimony or not is another matter. But this is what they say. Following his crucifixion and burial, Jesus appeared again and he was alive. He appeared in various locations and he appeared to different individuals and groups. And these people testify to the fact that it wasn't hearsay. But it, they are witnesses to the fact who tell us they saw Christ again, not as a phantom, not as a ghost or an apparition, not as an hallucination, uh, hallucination, sorry, not in a dream, not in a vision. Rather, they tell us that they saw Christ in person, in bodily form, and Jesus even had a digestive system because Jesus ate breakfast when he met some of his disciples after the crucifixion, after the resurrection. So what do we think? There are at least 13 resurrection appearances 
and I'm going to briefly say what these are and conclude this Easter message. But it's going to be Easter Sunday when Pastor Luke broadcasts this message uh, to you. So the first appearance was to Mary of Magdalene, which is recorded in the Gospel of Mark. Then Jesus appeared in the Gospel of Matthew 28 verse 9 and 10 to the women that were there. Then he appeared the third time to Cleopas and his companion in the Gospel of Luke. Then to Simon, also in the Gospel of Luke. Then to the disciples, except Thomas, he was absent. Then to the disciples, Thomas being present on the sixth time. Maybe some of you too dead the resurrection just like Thomas did. Now these six appearances occurred in Jerusalem after the disciples had gone to Galilee in obedience to the instructions which they had received from Jesus. That's the first six resurrection appearances. Jesus appears again to the seven people at the Sea of Tiberias in the Gospel of John chapter 21 verse 14. He appeared to the disciples on a mountain in Galilee where Jesus made a great claim and gave a great commission and proclaimed a great presence amongst his people. Matthew 28, 16 to 20. And by many commentators, this appearance is thought to be identified with the next appearance, the number nine appearance. And that was to the 500 people, which 1 Corinthians 15 verse 6 talks about. The tenth appearance was to James, Jesus' brother, 1 Corinthians 15, 7. Now, whether this took place in Galilee or in Judea is not stated. The disciples having returned to Jerusalem. On the eleventh, Jesus appeared on the Mount Olivet near Jerusalem, Acts 1, 4 to 11, Luke 24, verses 50 and 51. The next appearance that is specifically recorded is appearance by Jesus from heaven. And he encountered the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. Um, Damascus sorry, and, and Paul was on his way to Damascus and there... On that road, Jesus encountered him. Read read about that in Acts 9, verses 3 to 7, Acts 22, 6 to 10, Acts 26, 12 to 18, 1 Corinthians 9, um, 15, sorry, 1 Corinthians 9, 1 and 15, verse 8. The 13th appearance. There may have been several other appearances also. We don't know. Acts 1 and verse 3. Now, if we believe what these people say, then Christ has smashed open the grave from the inside and Christ has risen forever. It's whether you believe these witnesses or not. I do personally. I've been a born again Christian since 1985. I've not always been to church. I've not always been a Christian. I've not always believed what the, the scriptures say. That's for another time to tell you what changed my life. But, you know, if we believe these testimonies, these people who say what they saw, then we know that Christ has risen forever. And there's a lovely little verse of scripture in Romans 6 verse 9. We know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. Romans 6 verse 9. Nine, And you know, in a world which is dying right now, I mean, I've talked about a hundred million deaths. I don't know how many, how long will history go on? How long will time go on? But in a world right now, in the grip of a pandemic, in a, in a world which in everyone dies, except that one exception, Jesus Christ. What a lovely verse of scripture to read. If Christ is raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. And you know what? I've published some blogs um, regarding the resurrection. And in Christ, we too 
can live that life. Jesus says, he who believes in me, though he, that person, he or she, though they will die the process of nature, we join the hundred million, yet, said Jesus, shall they live. So there is a resurrection. That is my testimony this Easter. Now, God bless you. Stay at home. Protect the NHS and save lives. But more importantly, when it comes to saving lives, saving souls is just as important. So look to Jesus Christ as your saviour. God bless you tonight on this Easter evening. Lord, I thank you for your grace. Lord, if someone needs your assistance, maybe may they make contact, um, whatever it takes. But I just want to thank you for your love and your grace towards mankind. And Lord, right now, we have, the world is facing the big challenge. We're facing a killer. But Lord, you can overcome. You can help us. Lord, you can intervene into our world. And I pray right now, Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for all the lives you've saved. I want to thank you for... Uh, all the people that's uh, got through this corona virus, every single one of them. And again, Lord, I want to thank you for providing the workers to come and work and help the world community, the global village, as it were. Just praise your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Have a super Easter. Bye for now.